Buenos Marianas and God be with us all as Typhoon Malwar makes its approach to the Mariana Islands. And he's a very busy man. We're not going to take up that much more of his time. Uh, we have Chief Meteorologist from the National Weather Service, Landon Idlet, on the phone with us to tell us, to give us the latest on this storm. Let us know, all, uh, hopefully answer all of the questions that you might have about when the storm's coming, how big it might be, uh, and whether the forecast has improved on expectations uh, uh, in, in, in the last uh, several hours. Uh, Landon, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much, Tori, for reaching out to us. Um, this is definitely a significant and serious uh, situation that we are facing as an island. Um, we just put out our latest public advisory. That was advisory number 10 at 7.18 p.m., so just a little while ago. So latest information and forecast track information on Typhoon Mawar. And in that advisory, the winds have increased to 105 miles per hour. And that's still within the Category 2 uh, range, but it's just shy of Category 3 status, which is 111 miles per hour sustained and upwards. So we are just shy of a Category 3 storm approaching Guam at this time. Is I suppose that, you know, the, the very first thing that I think of is um, <laughs> since this is not expected uh, to make its approach to Guam and Rhoda, maybe Tinian and Saipan, uh, tomorrow night going into Wednesday, is there a possibility that the storm will weaken? Well, all trends have been trending upward, and that's been the uh, the expectation as far as the forecast track uh, over the last 36 or so hours. That is the trend now. We are still expecting the intensification, and we're still watching a little bit of a burst of lightning and deep convection near the core. That's all indicative of a still intensifying traffic cyclone. And so, again, we're already at uh, maximum Category 2 intensity and probably will cross the threshold into a Category 3 storm. And, again, those winds start at sustained 111 miles per hour, and those wind gusts can exceed well above 140 miles per hour. And this thing is making a beeline toward Guam. There is a little bit of shift in the track. Uh, we've been watching this very gradual southward shift um, over the last uh, 30 hours or so, and so it was passing over uh, north of Rota yesterday, yesterday morning, and the day before. That track is uh, that uh, track has steadily shifted southward, becoming a Rota storm. That a Rota channel has been holding through the Rota channel for the last 24 hours, and at two o'clock this afternoon, we're looking at a very tip of northern Guam passage. This latest track has shifted further southward. We're looking at a direct passage over southern Guam, and that includes uh, possibly the villages of Inarahan, uh, Telefoso, Marito, and Yamatic. So that's, that was keeping in line with the realm of possibilities of a possible direct passage of this typhoon. It still remains possible it could shift further southward and into the southern coastal waters. It's also possible it could shift back over central or northern Guam. So we are Definitely looking at the uh, the crosshairs of a significant typhoon passing over Guam. Very real, credible, serious threat. Um, one that we've not seen for many years. So there is a um, there is the higher probability now that this storm, this typhoon, is going to make landfall on Guam. That's correct. And so the question now is: Will it continue shifting southward? Or will it hold steady? Uh, the low start is the higher latitude it gains, the less room it has to make that hard left turn and stay south of us. So that's on our doorstep already, and we still have a good 24 hours before it gets within our coastal waters and starts making its passage over or very near Guam. So at the least, we're looking at a very near miss, and we're not talking by much distance. Um, or to a direct hit. So there's still a possibility, a very high likelihood, that we could have a direct eye passage over Guam. Uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or uh, if it was Sunday. Today's Tuesday, right? If it was yesterday or if it was Sunday when we were, when National Weather Service was estimating uh, perhaps 115 mile per hour maximum sustained winds by the time it makes its closest point of approach to the Mariana Islands. 
Uh, has that changed upward now that we're already at 105 and we're still 24 hours out? That is correct. It has shifted a little bit upward. Uh, we could be looking at a 125 mile per hour Category 3 storm. That's on the higher range of Category 3. Category 4, that starts with sustained winds of 130 miles per hour. So, again, this is a pretty ugly situation we're facing right now. Um, there's still 24 hours for wiggles and wobbles in the track. Uh, that is typical. And I, can, I, I, I cannot stress the, the importance of this, that we could be dealing with a direct hit or a very near miss. Um, regardless, um, we're going to be filling some intense conditions come Wednesday. In our time frame, that has not shifted much. We're still looking at peak conditions on Wednesday. Um, and again, we're stressing the importance of having all your plans, all your processes, all your activities complete squared away. Make sure you're in shelters, taking cover by sundown on Tuesday and remain there through sun up on Thursday because we're expecting the tropical storm force conditions arriving sometime shortly after sunset, uh, if not maybe slightly before, and then continuing through sunrise on Thursday. And those tropical storm conditions from the typhoon uh, would be felt sometime uh, earlier Tuesday night on both Guam and Rhoda. Would that be correct? And that's correct. And so with this latest track, the typhoon force winds have shifted southward with this latest track. So it's just south of Rhoda, uh, but Rhoda can still see strong to severe tropical storm force conditions with this passage. The good news is um, this, the strongest winds have shifted farther south of Tinian Saipan. So that is the good news for them. Uh, we're still looking at the, the high potential for tropical storm force conditions on Tinian and Saipan, but any farther southward shift would definitely be good news for Tinian and Saipan. I saw in your that is that would be good news for Tinian and Saipan. I'm, I'm I'm happy I'm happy that they would be um, spared this. You know, Saipan's been through so much over the past uh, few correct. years. Uh, I, I, I saw in your, I think it was 518 um, release from National Weather Service that uh, the storm seems to have um, uh, enlarged. It used to be 85 miles out from the radius. You got this tropical storm force winds. Now it's 100 miles out. Did I read that correctly? And that is correct. Uh, with this latest uh, statement, the typhoon force winds still expand uh, 40 miles out from center and the tropical storm wind field has expanded and now extends upwards of 145 miles. So again, this is a, a growing system, uh, and that's typical with these strengthening typhoons. The wind field will broaden across the region as the wind field also intensifies. And so again, even if it's a, a near miss for Guam, those winds extend far out from the immediate center. So whoever's closest to the center will see the uh, near peak conditions uh, in those strong uh, Tropical storm force winds to typhoons category one, two, or three will be extending far from that center. So keep that in mind. The closer it is, the worse it's going to be. If it moves away, it'll be not quite so worse. Um, but those peak conditions, again, they could be exceeding category one, two, or three conditions with a near miss or a direct passage. What are the possibilities of it, of this growing into a category four by the time it gets here? You know, that's always a possibility. Um, again, the closer it gets, uh, the less time it has to really intensify. But again, we have about 24 hours, 24 to 30 hours before it makes its eventual passage. So that's quite a bit of time. We go into the overnight hours, and sometimes these things can intensify during the, the nighttime period. So we're going to be watching this closely. Um, we've seen the forecast trends gradually bumping up the maximum wind speeds as they pass through the Marian Islands. That could still continue further. Um, so we're good. we have to keep a very close watch on this. As currently forecast, a southern Guam passage would be more of a worst-case scenario for us because we're going to be on the stronger side of this typhoon. So any forward motion will add to the maximum sustained winds on the northern front quadrant of the storm. Oh, goodness. Uh, I have a... Uh... I can't remember what my other question was, but by I only had two questions left. One was, at 125 miles per hour, what can it? Can you put this into some context for those of us who are older and remember the the 90s and the 2000s? Uh, what storm could that compare to on Guam? Well, um, 
gosh, you have to think way back. I mean, this would exceed Tyson Dawson, what we had. That was like a Category 1, uh, high-end Category 1. Tyson Man Cut, that was a high-end Category 1 to low-end Category 2. But Man Cut did strike loaded directly, and that was a low-end Category 3 Typhoon that caused pretty significant damage up there. And so if you're looking at a Typhoon Category 3, that would possibly cause extensive damage to wooden structures, weakened by termite infestation, wet and dry wood rot. And I'm reading this from a, a study that Chip Garn had completed many years ago. He was an expert with tropical cyclones. Structures made of light material may be destroyed. A group window and door damage to well-built, well-built wooden and metal buildings will be destroyed. Air full of small flying debris. Do not be near windows. Even if your shutters are closed, you can still get uh, some debris puncturing through shutters. So shutters do a lot of work, but they can still also be compromised. Um, hollow spun concrete power poles broken or tilted and many non-reinforced wooden power poles blown down or broken. Many secondary power lines down. Palm trees begin to lose their crowns and 30 to 50 percent defoliation of trees and shrubs. That's with category three condition. It gets worse with category four. Gosh. Wow. All right. So this is a pretty sobering conversation. Is there anything else that you wanted to add, Landon? Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The next uh, full uh, forecast update will come out at 2 o'clock in the morning and then followed by the 8 o'clock. Um, we're going to be watching this closely. Um, unless it pulls more than uh, 50 miles away to the north or south, uh, we're going to have a significant uh, effect from this tropical cyclone to Guam. Thank you so much, Landon. Thank you for uh, giving it to us real. And um, at least this gives us time, all the time to prepare. We have the next 24 hours or so. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful yeah. day. God bless you. Thank you, Troy. All right. God bless you. Thank you. So an extremely sobering conversation with Landon I led from the National Weather Service, uh, basically telling us um, that we're in for one here on Guam. And uh, is your is your microphone on, Eric? It, 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 I'm uh, it is I'm now. concerned, and um, I'm one of those. I'm forty. I'm gonna be forty three years old. I remember Typhoon Russ, Typhoon Omar, Super Typhoon Paca, mm -hmm. Super Typhoon Pongsona, Super Typhoon Chatan, and um, those were not good times. Nope. And we have not had something like this since 2002, December, when Super Typhoon Pongsona came through. And uh, my dad lost his house. Your dad lost his house? Yep. Oh, my gosh. Was he in the house when, um, or was he at a shelter or someone else's uh, house? He went to my grandma's. He went to your grandma's. Thank goodness he went to your grandma's. The, I, I think this is um, an important part uh, of the decision-making process. Right now, you just heard Landon I led talk about how serious things are going to get here on Guam, perhaps in Rota, and how the expectations are stiffening that this is going to pass over Guam. Yeah. Uh, he's not, it's not 100% certain. He is hoping it goes 50 miles south. He's hoping that if it's a direct hit, it's not a direct hit to the south because you heard him say that the westerly something or the what as it rotates the maximum sustained oh. winds are are the harshest at the top and so the entire island is going to feel, feel something bad uh if you live in a wooden tin structure you got to get to shelter seek shelter yeah, and emergency shelters i believe are open tonight if i'm not mistaken contact your mayor's office for that uh no matter where you live now is the time to take things that are loose in the yard uh, and put them inside, put them, if, if I don't know, if, if Crystal become, Pacos uh, and Augustine talked about a, um, uh, your trash cans, right? Uh, most people won't want to put their trash cans inside their homes. So what do you do? She said, if you have an outside kitchen, put it there. And I, I said, well, you know, I think strong winds can blow, it can still blow that away in your outside kitchen. She said, um, get some chains and lock them down. I mean, probably that's the best you can do, right? Water. What about water? Fill them up with water. Oh, fill them up with oh, fill them up with water. I didn't even think about that. You're so smart. Fill them up with water, and um, it, it, yeah, it, it'll be a hard. Uh, it'll be difficult for for something like that to fly. But it'll roll away. Yep. It'll roll away, but it won't fly away. That's 
Darn, you're uh, you're really smart, Chalina. Or leave the lids Thanks. open so that the rain will fill them up with water. I don't know. There Something. There you go. Uh, but there's more than that. Uh, whatever you have laying around in the yard, even if it's you think it's heavy, you'd be surprised what winds like that can pick up and throw around. Um, you heard him talk about uh, at, in a Category 3 storm, uh, you get to a situation where the windows might burst in because of the pressure. And yeah. so even if the shutters are up, you don't want to have every single window in your house closed. closed. You, I learned this in uh, Super Typhoon Pongsono when I was at my brother's house and the uh, sliding doors, they started to cave in and I, it just freaked me out. So I, I just figured to open it a little bit and it, it kind of solved the situation, but everything else got wet inside. There's, um, uh, I'm, I'm rambling because I'm rather surprised at the conversation that we just had and it was a very sobering conversation. And I'm gonna pray a little extra hard tonight uh, for myself, my family, my friends, for all of you out there uh, on Guam, Rhoda, Tinian, and Saipan, God bless us all. Peace be with you all. Thank you for joining us tonight, and uh, let's get ready for this. Good night.